the extermination occurred. I mean, part of it's arithmetical and definitional of counting people who are of indigenous descent and given any opportunity might have signified that identity, but by law were defined as black and signified that way, okay? The other part of it was physical, so that you got a population of, say, 15 million people at the outset, reduced to 237,000 by 1890. That's a pretty sweeping reduction population by whatever set of means, okay? Got to be explained somehow. And in a subliminal sense, oh yeah, mistakes were made and tragedies occurred, but ultimately they didn't really count as people anyway. They're not really human in the sense that we understand it. And you do that by trivialization, cartoon parodies, drunken Indians, tumbleweeds cartoons, Bob Hope, Iron his stupid little six gun in the Hollywood Western in the 1940s and ten Indians fall down. You know, pretty casual treatment of genocide. But it's, it's a way of accounting for something in a non disturbing manner. So you ultimately make fun and of it or demean it through names like Squaw Valley and Squaw Peak and absolutely refuse to alter. I mean, people have pointed this out, and then you go from academia linguists to try to make case that the word's not really Mohawk in origin. It, it's an even greater distortion of an Algonquian term for a head woman. Okay? It's not. But we got to have all these arcane games. Well, they continue to do it. We can. We're imposing that. And we can suck other oppressed groups into participating in the imposition. That's the best part. That's the best part. And empire has always enlisted the oppressed as being the shock troops of empire in the next conquest. I mean, look at the Irish, for God's sake. What Britain had done in Ireland, that whole business of scalp bounties and stuff was imported from Ireland. In Ireland, Ireland being rather smaller than North America, they wanted the whole head, okay, but carrying heads around in the woods up north, down here for that matter, whole heads gets to be a little cumbersome, kind of heavy when you're killing a lot of people, so it's abbreviated to scalps. That mentality was imposed on the Irish first and then the practice is imported. The Irish are also imported. The officers for Custer 7th at the Little Bighorn were primarily. Custer himself was one generation deep Irish immigrant. Okay, the shock troops of empire here are the colonized of the preceding conquest. Yeah. Gunga Din, the famous poem, Kipling poem, you know, the guy who blows the bugle to warn the British troops to save them from his own people. So that his own people are slaughtered and he along with them. And the Brit says, now this is the definition of a good Indian, really. Though I beat you and I flayed you, you're a better man than I, Gunga Din. Why? Service to empire. Sell out your people. Okay, that's what it is that's rewarded and defines the good walk where the Oriental gentleman applies to anyone of color in British discourse. And through generations, can indoctrinate those populations to actually believe that. Again, we're living in it. You see, the main objective in the so-called progressive discourse is to perfect the system, make it work better. No. It's the system that created this. Perfecting it is not going to fix it. You've got to dismantle and alter it. But 
that's unrealistic talk.